What's going on there guys? Good evening. It's Earthmaster back here on the live stream with an update video on this Tuesday night. It is September 13th, 2022, just about 9.30 p.m. California time. Latest quake shows a 2.7 in the area of California. California definitely rocking and rolling here in the past few hours. Uh, may issue an earthquake watch for the West Coast considering the combined movement up north of the bay and a lot of activity over the past 24 hours roughly about the gulf northward into northern uh, the gulf of california northward into california seeing quite the uptick in movement let's go ahead and check out the latest activity here across the west coast of course we did have that 4.4 uh come into the area i believe they've upgraded this earthquake here to a 4.4.5 uh, if i'm correct one of the maps have it as a 4.5, but for now, they're still showing a 4.4. Uh, that was followed up just uh, looks like by a few seconds later by a 3.9 uh, aftershock. So things kind of rocking and rolling out here around the Santa Rosa area. I appreciate all the reports there on the comments. Quite a few folks did report filling this all over the Northern California area, uh, including the Bay Area, San Francisco, Richmond, Vallejo, Vacaville. Even portions up through Sacramento uh, reported feeling that earthquake. I live out here uh, just outside of Chico. Uh, I did not feel this earthquake. Not a huge one, but quite a few folks did report feeling that earthquake with some moderate to potentially strong shaking right around the epicenter of that earthquake. Uh, now, it did strike on a fault system. Uh, let's see. Let's go back here to the fault map. Real quick here, zoom in. Struck right on the um, Rogers Creek Fault. Now, went, a, went ahead and did a little bit of investigating here on this fault system. Went back, uh, well, a certain distance. It's about 1900 or so. And um, pulled up. Uh, some earthquake activity within the region of Santa Rosa, specifically just here in this area. Uh, I pulled up 4.5 and above since about 1900. Now, the 4.4 struck roughly within the same area, it looks like, as the 4.6 back in 1968. Let's zoom in a little bit closer and get some exact details here. Just north of Santa Rosa, right? Right up against the crest of these little mountains here. That's uh, roughly within that same area of the 4.6 back in 1968. And since then, um, there really hasn't been a lot of activity here. We had a 4.5 further south uh, near the Glen Ellen area, but uh, that's much further south. So what is up with this Rogers Creek fault? Uh, a simple search here on the usgs.gov website or Google We'll give you a little bit of more, a uh, little bit more detailed info on the Rogers Creek Fault going through Sonoma County and the Santa Rosa area. Uh, the Rogers Creek Fault, which lies east of the San Andreas Fault, is the main strand of the North American Pacific Plate boundary north of San Francisco Bay. The two sides of the fault slip past each other at a rate of six uh, to ten mm per year. And uh, it looks like it's estimated that is there is a 33% chance of a uh, 6.7 earthquake on the combined Rogers Creek and the Hayward Fault System over the next 30-year period. Now, they're using the 30-year period as 2014 um, to 2043. This article was put out in 2018, it looks like. So, uh, Got to watch the Hayward Fault. That's definitely running through some highly populated regions of the Bay. Very, uh, very densely populated region. New information that came to light as a result of this new map includes, uh, one, that the Rogers Creek Fault extends about 17 km farther north than previously thought. Um, two, identification of where the fault crosses the Santa Rosa Creek floodplain in the central Santa Rosa area. All right, uh... The new findings indicate a greater hazard than previously thought for the area from more in increased exposure to potential surface fault rupture and strong ground shaking. Um, and there's a, a lot more on this uh, specific fault. 
Again, it's not a very short fault. It's actually a pretty strong or a, a pretty lengthy fault system. I wish I could zoom in a little bit closer without the faults disappearing. Um, here it is, a Rogers Creek fault. It looks like it kind of comes up to a different fault system called the Harrellsburg fault. But it, to me, it kind of looks like it's one in the same. Uh, and then the combined fault here. Uh, I'm wondering if this happens to go through here, through this area, potentially underneath uh, the bay. Notice that it does stop here uh, and it picks up into the... Uh, Hayward fault zone. I'm, I'm just wondering if there's a potential that there could be a connection down below that we don't uh, know about yet as far as that specific fault. If there is, that could be uh, some that could be some bad news for the Bay Area people in, in Vallejo, Oakland. The Hayward fault runs directly through the uh, east side of Oakland, it looks like. But uh, either way, definitely uh, some activity kicking up on that fault system today with a 4.4 and a 3.9 and there has been some other smaller quakes there pull up the all magnitudes map this up here to the north is the uh, calpine hydrothermal operations uh, they produce energy by injecting raw sewage from the bay area uh, or anywhere i guess and injecting it down below into the heated surface uh not for sure how far maybe about i can't remember the exact measurements that they inject it but um, it produces violent steam, which creates energy. They, they utilize that uh, steam to create energy and power homes throughout a good portion of the area. So, but this is up here, this is very typical. That's humans uh, creating some interesting ideas there with uh, generating power. Um, so yeah, so far here with this area, a 4.4, 3.9, and a 1.6. Nothing coming in yet far as any further activity goes just those three earthquakes within within a very short amount of time there north of the bay right around the santa rosa area and the depth the depth there is, looks like about 7.5 kilometers um doesn't look like um there's any uh, kind of notice on it a lot of times the usgs will put like a little summary on what they believe uh you know happened in the specific fault system and whatnot but i don't see it on here um, a couple folks on the video uh, reported in the comments that they did receive a quake notification or be prepared for uh, some shaking from the, uh, the USGS Shake Alert app, So, which is pretty cool. Definitely pretty cool. All right, uh, getting back to the earthquake activity here along the west coast. Let me pull up back to 2.5 and above. Uh, there's definitely some activity ramping up here for sure. The most recent one here at 2.6 outside of the Ridgecrest area, uh, which sits down here. And overall, looking at the uh, the West Coast in gen general, if you want to count all the activity there north of uh, Truckee uh, overnight and yesterday time frame, we've definitely seen a major uptick in movement and pressure increase here along the West Coast. The uh, creeping section here has been very active over the last couple days as well. Uh, Ridgecrest, not so much. I mean, there's a couple earthquakes filling in, but things have come to a complete stop there, it seems like. Only a handful of quakes. Uh, down in Southern California, this is another area I'm watching. If we start seeing a line of activity here right up against the southern segment here of the San Andreas Fault, we might want to be on guard for the big one. Uh, and I say that uh, not out of fear-mongering, but just out of a word of caution because this segment right here is, is sprung like a spring or a rubber band so to speak uh, it's just so tight uh, 300 years of buildup that uh, expected magnitude here is an 8.1 magnitude earthquake for the southern segment here of the san andreas fault now this is a ways away from los angeles but the uh, li liquefaction features that are going to happen over here uh, is going to be pretty damaging to the los angeles areas uh, Los Angeles area, I should say, and not to mention Palm Desert uh, and all these other communities out here are going to uh, not be good for uh, for an 8.1. So we've been watching some activity down here in the Imperial Fault, um, and see if they got that four pointer down here. This is the plate boundary here, 4.1. That was from uh, yeah. Let's see when was that? Oh, it looks like at this morning time frame. So noticeable increase here on the Imperial Fault, uh, which is this section right here. 
right here on the San Andreas Fault, just off the southern segment near the Salton Sea. This came in last night, and we're still getting some activity here along the North American Plate side. Uh, this is the plate boundary, North American side, Pacific Plate over here, Palm Desert. Um, 29 Palms is on the North American side. And there's just been a lot of activity here, and even some in the last hour. And you put all this bigger picture together, West Coast lighting up, uh, four-pointer up north, plate boundary movement uh, along the creeping section. Yeah, I would definitely be watching the uh, Southern California area right now overnight. In fact, I'm probably going to issue here on the live stream a uh, earthquake watch here for the Southern Cal area just due to all the increased seismic activity across the West Coast. And if you look at the picture here, bigger picture, uh, a little bit of movement throughout this area uh, over the last 24 hours, but overall things are just really active in in uh in general across both sides of the pacific plate normally we get that little teeter-totter effect when we see the west uh kick up here in earthquake activity uh the eastern portion of the plate goes quiet and vice versa but now it's just really ramping up on both sides and that could be something to watch pretty closely uh, we'll get to the western portion of the pacific plate here, here in a little bit when i look at some more detailed uh quakes here across Nevada, even inland into the uh, Great Basin area, getting some earthquake activity. Uh, a little handful of quakes here in the Mina, Nevada area. This is that area that's seen uh, some earthquake movement back in 2019, the six-pointer. Uh, and also some activity down here outside of Las Vegas, although not as active here in this region as we had seen in previous days. Um, up through the Yellowstone area, looks like there is a couple earthquakes here listed on the map. Just some very small microquakes, the largest one, a 1.1. Let's go ahead and check out the Yellowstone overview real quick, and then we'll get back to the earthquakes. Uh, these guys have been doing a pretty good job of showing all these uh, earthquakes that have been popping up. So uh, I'm pretty impressed with uh, whatever's going on there at the USGS um, Yellowstone office there. A lot of these earthquakes are reporting there on the map. There's not a lot, and these are all small microquakes, and they kind of go... Uh, with what's going on here on the USGS map. Uh, there might be a couple missing, maybe three or four, but hey, they're getting these microquakes on and on the same day, so that's pretty cool. Pacific Northwest, uh, Mount St. Helens kind of uh, earthquaking a little bit. It's been an ongoing type of deal here for the past few months. No GPS uplift, uh, so I believe this is just regular faulting or subsidence there of the caldera in general but something to always take note of and keep a keep an eyeball on. So moving up the side of the Mount Rainier area and also just outside of Seattle, looks like a couple small quakes. This earthquake way off the Pacific, uh, I believe, let's see here. Yeah, that did kick up here uh, earlier this afternoon, a 2.6 on the, uh, just off the Blanco fracture zone at uh, looks like about 10 kilometers. While we're on this topic here real quick, let's go ahead and check out the trimmer. See what we got for the uh, pressure out there along the area. Notice down here, uh, getting a little separate swarming of trimmer. Now these are not earthquakes, but trimmer happening down deep into the Cascadia subduction zone. The monster that sleeps offshore here that will one day uh, wreak some havoc out here for whoever's living out here along the coastlines. And of course inland from the shaking but uh this is going to be a very dangerous and deadly event once this 9.0 earthquake does happen uh, it's going to send a massive tsunami into the oregon and washington area and northern california not to mention a pacific wide destructive tsunami to hawaii and uh, japan that's that's just a fact it's not fear mongering it's not fairy tales that's just 100 percent facts it's going to happen one day the question is when trimmer activity tonight Looking at uh, about 101, 101 epicenters, uh, mostly confined to the Oregon area, but again, a little bit down here on the southern end, the very southern end of the Cascadia scene, that tremor activity as well. All right, earthquake uh, activity. Let's get back here. Looking at the Texas region, yeah, we're seeing a pretty good cluster of quakes out there outside of Pecos, and most of these are out there in the uh, the oil fields. If, if you zoom in close, um, we could probably see some. We do this a lot, and we verify it a lot, that it's definitely out there amongst these uh, 
oil and pumping operations, these little square boxes that have little ponds on them with, with wastewater, injection wastewater. Uh, and there's one just right next to a beautiful swimming pool, right? Yeah, that's wastewater. Right next, within feet, 2.0 there out in the beautiful state of Texas. All right, backing out of the oil fields. Uh, we go out to the uh, Appalachian Mountains there. Those are from earlier this morning. Nothing new kicking up here throughout the afternoon time frame. Uh, still seeing some activity around the Caribbean plate here. Been, been crunching a little bit, so to speak, around Panama, off the coast of Costa Rica and the Puerto Rico region. All seeing uh, a little bit of heightened activity within this area today. South America, not so much. Uh, there is some more movement down into the South Sandwich Trench happening earlier this afternoon with a 5.1. This area has seen relatively uh, a pretty good amount of earthquake activity here over the last week. Um, kicking up here. Of course, this area did see an 8.1 last year. I believe it was an 8.1, somewhere around there. Um, can't remember the exact magnitude, but definitely a big one. And it was followed up by a few big ones as well. So uh, aftershock sequences is continuing to happen there in that region. Are continuing to happen. Uh, big island of Hawaii. Looks like most of the activity, and there's a lot lighting up here within the last hour. It is right around the southeastern edge of, port of the uh, Hawaii area, around Pahala. Mostly twos and uh, some ones in there. No unusual changes noted across the board as far as the volcanoes go. Alaska, uh, Alaska seems to be tapering off a little bit. Most of this activity here even though it's microquake, uh, it seems to be toning down just a little bit here within the last hour or so. One earthquake outside of the Guam area coming in. Mariana Trench area, 29.4 kilometers. Did see some movement earlier today at 4.7 as well. 84 kilometers deep, so uh, a little bit of adjustment going on here around the Mariana Trench, Philippine Plate. A lot of activity, like I mentioned here, just worldwide, uh, or, or I shouldn't say worldwide, but at least around the western and the eastern portions of the Pacific Plate uh, taken off pretty nicely. Looking at the movement here throughout the area, um, it looks like we had uh, another 4.9 over here on the western side of the Philippine Plate uh, near Taiwan. That one was uh, just a little bit ago, a couple hours ago, but most of this four activities seen here on the map across Indonesia and the Fiji Islands area, Tonga Trench, are some older activity from this morning. But either way, things are very, very active if you look at this map. Very active. It's been a while since I've seen it this active on a broad scale. West Coast, just be on guard with all this activity. You can't ignore that uh, movement for sure. Uh, let's see what else we got. Um, checked out the trimmer map. Checked out Yellowstone. Let's go ahead and check out the volcanic seismicity around Mount Rainier. I noticed there was a couple quakes showing up. Sometimes these don't work right. Uh, I wish they had a couple more stations up there. Camp Muir area. We'll check this out here real quick and see what we got for earthquake activity. And it's hard to tell sometimes with this type of movement. Um, earthquakes for the most part are going to be well um, defined those look a little odd not for sure what those are I don't know if it's interference, rock falls, wind um, so it's really hard to tell from that map let's check out the Mount St. Helens area real quick and see what we got there as well a couple earthquakes listed on the map from the PNSN network and uh, earthquakes are definitely going to look somewhat like that, really thin. Uh, if they're big enough, they'll be thicker as far as the, uh, the width goes. Um, there's a couple more throughout the morning time frame, it looks like. But uh, no major swarms, <coughs> excuse me, to take note of. Just a typical little swarming that's been going on there for a little while there at Mount St. Helens. All right, Solar Ham site, far as space weather goes, looks like we're kicking up on the proton events again. Notice up here around the polar regions, showing some enhanced uh, regional radiation up there, some high frequency blackouts, but I don't think it's gonna affect too many people because there's not a whole lot of people way up there at the polar regions, right? Um, 
Looks like uh, these guys forecasting a 15% chance on the Proton event, so things are, uh, well, it looks like they're just in tune, on time there. As far as space, as far as uh, solar flare activity goes, 3098 is about our only major threat. This is the most recent uh, update here. There's still a lot of intermixing here. The blues, the reds, the uh, yellow, the greens, all these showing a little bit of complex magnetic field. Uh, this one right here doesn't look all that possible as far as any uh, flaring goes. This is 3088, our old bad boy, which is now named, um, what is it? 3121 or 3121, right? Let me check here. Where do you go? 3102. 3102 is the uh, the new sunspot name here for this one. X3088. That was its former name. But now that's made a trip around the sun, uh, it kind of wants to uh, pop up here again and see what it can do. But it doesn't look all that um, you know, active as far as the uh, complex magnetic field. 3098 is about the only one that harbors anything as far as uh, a complex magnetic field at a beta gamma class. And a 70% chance of a C flare, 15% chance for an M flare. No major coronal holes that are facing us. Here's a latest look here across the board in Canada. Uh, we have been seeing a little activity off here, off the uh, village or Port Clements, BC area. Just some very small microquakes at the very northern end of the Cascadia uh, subduction zone. Far from, aside from that, things are pretty quiet across the board up here. I'm not for sure if they're not reporting it or there's just not a whole lot happening up there in the uh, Canada area. Quick check of the National Data Buoy Center. No uh, suspicious buoys in event mode everything looks calm and clear for now uh, but it's just best to be on guard folks and make sure you have an earthquake plan uh, again with the west coast lighting up like that uh, i am going to uh, put out a earthquake watch here for tonight and tomorrow um, just due to the enhanced activity kind of kicking up here what that means is because we're seeing such a, uh, a pretty large uptick here far as broad scale activity goes no major swarms but when we see a bunch of uh you know twos kick up here in certain areas and more so around the southern segment of the san Andreas fault we got a bunch of activity on a uh on the uh area north of the bay area with that uh with that 4.4 4. uh definitely good to be on guard and better safe than sorry so just a good reminder folks to uh you know always make sure you have an earthquake plan Make sure you got uh, personal belongings and whatnot. Uh, what do we got coming in here to the seismographs right now? Oh, it looks like Yellowstone. A little spike there in Yellowstone. Uh, and I lost all my other stations for some reason. Samoa, uh, Hawaii, Mount St. Helens, all missing there on the seismographs. So right now we only have Barrett down Southern California, Petrolia up in Northern California, and Yellowstone. So hopefully those come back. Um, if they don't, I will definitely uh, work on them. Uh, but more than likely, they will probably come back um, before the night's over. All right, guys. Have a good day. and um, Or good night, I should say. And don't forget, we're going to be doing our drawing Thursday for our members only. Had a couple new members join re recently here. So they will also be included in a uh, chance to win free Earthmaster merchandise. That's what we're doing this month. Next month uh, be something different. Might be another uh, $50 gift card. I'll have to see how it goes. But uh, we're always giving something away to our members here as a way of saying thank you. And of course, uh, now we're getting really close to 80,000 subscribers. Uh, we're not doing any drawing here at 80,000. But once we... Uh, we just did one here at 75,000. But uh, once we hit... Uh, 100,000 subscribers, that's going to be a pretty decent giveaway. Uh, going to be giving away prizes to 10 people, and uh, I think that would be cool. Definitely cool. And uh, might give some top prizes away um, for, you know, I haven't really decided yet. I haven't really sat down and talked with Miss Mimi's how we're going to do it. But uh, either way, 80,000 to 100,000 that's only 20,000 subscribers I think maybe we should be we could be able to do that by the end of the year or possibly uh, uh, next year sometime looking forward to it 
All right, guys, have a good day, good night, um, wherever you're at out there. Stay safe, and we will chat you guys another time. Peace out, everyone. Have a good night.